helping with things. You always have someone, if you, are, if you belong to a beautiful community like ours, you always have someone who says, you know what, I've got this. Don't worry, I've got this. But actually, when your baby's crying at 3 a.m., you realize nobody can do it but you. You have to get up, and then you realize, I'll never rest again. But you know what? It's priceless. I'm loving it. I'm grateful. Baby Sophia Lara Willing, she is indeed the baby of the family. In Jesus' name, this family has got a new baby. This, yeah, amen. The same way that your babies are my babies too. And we look after each other babies. And, and I love how beautiful our family are because uh, David came home. The, look, they struggle. I love it. Can we just watch? Guys, you are doing it. Look what I made them do. Guys, I'm terrible. I'm sure they're thinking like, why is she back? Send her back. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Guys, I love you. Love you too. Thank you. Love you. Love you, Duro. Bless Duro. He's used to it. He's in the youth. He's, you know what? The youth band. What was that? Well, Duro, you are a blessing. Yeah, it was you because I was on maternity leave. I had nothing to do with it. It was you. It was Christine Demi. Hello. Hello. You can MD now, Demi Lade. Okay. Okay. You're my friend. Christine Samuel. Christine, you are. I love your top. Beautiful. And Tamreo, I mean, Tamreo is unfair. Life is unfair, Tamreo. Your voice is ridiculous. <laughs> I open up my heart. Oh, my goodness. You open up my lungs. It was beautiful. I love it. You guys were beautiful. Thank you, God, for them. You know, your kids are in good hands. I love them. Anyways, so the reason why I'm here preaching for the youth takeover is because you are not here, it's youth. It's because where have you been? What have you been doing? I had to do it. Because every youth takeover, usually we have a young person that preaches in here, but they disappeared. They are all somewhere else. And please don't blame the pandemic, because the pandemic brought these two beautiful girls called Okiki and Temi to us. I know, in the middle of pandemic, these two treasures come to us. In the midst of pandemic, Madeline joined the youth band. In the midst of pandemic, we've got Judy playing the, the guitar. I love it. I did not see the coming church. How God is in the move and how he brings the people we need. However, there is still a lot missing. And that's you. Where are you? There is still a way to get involved. There is still a way to serve because God never stops. The kingdom never stops. And I believe God is calling a lot of you from home thinking, I actually miss youth. I actually miss church. They're a little bit weird, but actually I know they make a quite difference. And they do. I could not live my life without this. I could not. I would be a sad, moaning, angry Brazilian person on a foreign land with a baby now to look after by myself. I could not. Thank you, church. By the way, you know, I have the most beautiful family. Thank you for all the food, for all the gifts, for the prayers. I love you. You are beautiful. From Jollof to Curry, I had a blessed maternity leave. <laughs> and the, the, the pasties as well. Thank you, Tola. They were really good. Anyways, focus. So... Why is a fridge here? Well, because I have a fridge in my house too. And my fridge is filled with things I have to remember. So I have all appoint, doctor's appointments for, for the baby Sophia Lara Wheeling. I have pictures. I have uh, magnets that I, I like. And from places I went to, look, I went to Tunisia. It was so good. I went, I went on a camel. Anyways. It was really, I went to Portugal too, lovely. So everything I want to remember, I put in there. Maybe somebody needs to remember to pray. I write their names in a little pad thing, notepad that I have, because as I'm opening the fridge, I remember that person and I pray for that person. So whatever I need to remember, I stick on the fridge. So my fridge is a palava, it's crazy. 
So today I'm here because I want you, City Youth, to remember 10 things. So I want you to stick in your fridge 10 important magnets for your life that I believe is important. I could have a lot more because, you know, I can talk a lot, but we don't have enough time for that. So here are my best 10 fridge magnets for you this morning. So my first one is very simple. Use deodorant. I mean, <laughs> oh no, who is this? Oh, I actually broke Barcelona. Oh well, I broke Barcelona. Keep the boo in here. The, f the first one is use deodorant. And some of them are going to be physical. Some of them are going to be spiritual. But people, can I, I cannot emphasize how important deodorant is. And some of you are like me. The cheap Audi one won't work. I found out that, and I was smelling worse than I was before because I sweat a lot. So that one didn't work for me. So maybe you need to find one that works for you because sometimes you are using the deodorant and it's making everything worse. And your mom and dad are telling you, go and wash, go and wear the deodorant. And you think your mom is just being a pain when she's like, I'm trying to help you out, mate, because nobody's going to be around you. And they're going to make fun joke, funny jokes about you, including myself. No, I'm joking. I would never. No. Use deodorant. Do you need a Bible verse to back that up for you? Okay, let's go there. Let's make this spiritual. Maybe you wear deodorant after that. So, look what 2 Corinthians says. If you don't have a Bible, we've got a digital Bible here. Wow, I made that PowerPoint last night. I love PowerPoint. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16 says, Our offering to God is this. We are the sweet smell of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are being lost. So we want to be approachable. How are we going to be approachable if we don't smell nice? Let's make this spiritual. We want people to know Jesus, but how do we make Jesus known if we don't smell nice? We, our attitude stinks. Our mouth stinks. We stink. Lectrole. How? Verse 16. To those who are lost, we are the smell of death that brings death. But to those who are being saved, we are the smell of life that brings life we can bring life through our smell. Spiritually, you can bring life if your attitude is a good attitude. Amen. Amen. You can bring life if your heart is a beautiful heart, a heart of, of worship, a heart of servanthood, a heart of Jesus. You can bring life. Number two, hold the door for someone. I mean, hold the door for someone. You know when you're going into the coffee shop, or you're going to school, and then you're just cha 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 and this person opened the door for you, you don't even say thank you, or you see the person is struggling, you don't even care, you just go ahead. People, that shows a lot about somebody's character by how they deal with a door. Hold the door for someone. Be kind. Put others first. It's okay. You're not going to miss out, because if God wants that position for you, he will give it to you. If God wants you to have... Whatever you want in school, I don't know, you want to be the captain from your team. And yeah, you're got, you've got to work hard. Baby, you've got to work hard. Yes. Because God doesn't like somebody who is lazy and just say like, well, you call me out upon the waters. So I don't need to learn how to swim. No. You are going to have to do your bit, girl. You're going to have to do your bit, boy. But if God wants you to have whatever and become whatever, he will. So be kind to others. Let, put others first. Don't be scared of it. Don't be uncomfortable with it. Open the doors for others. In the spiritual, open the doors for others. Let new people in. Let new people bother you. <laughs> Let them be heard. Let them speak. Let them be seen. It's okay. Be kind. Open the door for someone. And look what the Bible says. Do you need a Bible verse for that? Let's go there then. So, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4 says, Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk to your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. 
Forget yourselves. Ah, that is painful, I know, but just do it. The Bible says God will honor you. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. You're not happy with this one? Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 says, Love each other like brothers and sisters. Give each other more honor than you want for yourself. How beautiful. And can I, can I remind you that this is the Bible. This is God's own breath is speaking to your heart and soul. If he says that, you can trust that you're not going to miss a thing. God doesn't want to put others first so you are left in the mud. He wants to give you peace, joy, and favor too. But he wants to test your heart. He wants to test your attitude. He wants to test your, your intentions. So be vulnerable and be real with it and put others first. And just watch what God's going to do. The third one is be generous. Well done, William Baldwin. Very good. Well done, William. Be generous. I love what William said. It's so beautiful. Be generous. Go an extra mile. Did somebody ask you to do a task? Just don't do a task. Do a bit more. Go an extra mile. Work just a little bit harder. Walk just a little bit further. Climb just a little bit higher. Excellence. Do it well. Be generous with whatever you have in your hands. Give more than you were asked for. Because do you know what generosity is? It's not to give what you, 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 it was asked of you. Let's say God asks you to come here. You've just done what you need to. If you're generous, you go a bit further. That's generosity. If, you're just, if you think you're being generous because you're doing what you were meant to do, you're not generous. You're just doing what you're meant to do. Be generous, be large, enlarge your heart, enlarge your attitude, enlarge your time, enlarge, find a way to, and God will help you, I promise you that. I was so worried, am I going to be able to do ministry and being a mom? Because Dave and I, we do a lot, yes, we, I mean, our lives are consumed by ministry, which we love, but we were wondering, are we going to be able to do baby and ministry? And I thank God for all the ministry people out there that showed us that it's possible. But you're going to have to enlarge yourself. You're going to have to make extra sacrifices. You're going to have to breastfeed during worship and hope that the baby will be fed during your preaching. <laughs> and hope that she's not going to cry. But you know what? Thank God for community. I know if I need, I can give my baby to Labukan. Say, but Labukan, I'm going to preach. <laughs> can you hold, please? But we, I'm going to have to stretch. And you're going to have to stretch. Linda was meant to look after my baby, but David stole him, Linda. Thank you, though. She was ready to look after Sophia. She's so kindly. Thank you. But David was like, ah, proud dad, new dad, proud dad. No, I've, I've got this. <laughs> he actually put her a pair of new vans that is double of the size of her feet. And I said, David, it doesn't fit her. It's huge. Yeah, but if you take over, it's going to fit it. Come on, it's going to be all right. Blah, blah, blah. We've lost this pair of shoes around here today at 10 times. So if you see a baby shoe, please give to David. <laughs> Leave in the sound desk. You'll probably find it. <laughs> You are going to have to work hard, but be generous. Stretch yourself. Enlarge yourself. Go an extra mile because that's what Jesus has done. He just didn't give the world to you. He died for you too. He is generous. So be generous. Be the kind of person and set the culture for others. You, it, what did others are morning like, really? Bruno asked me to put the fridge on the stage. People like, they're like, so what? I'm doing for Jesus. I'm not doing for Bruno. I know that if I put the fridge there and God works, people are going to be saved. So what? I, my teacher asked me to do that. You know what? That's fine. I've got this. I have an attitude of generosity and servanthood. I'm going to do it. I'm fine. Watch and see what the Lord will do in your life. Number four is drink water. Drink water. I don't have a Bible verse for that one, and I didn't dare to use, come to me if you're thirst, because that would really not be adequate, because it would be out of context. So there's no Bible verse for that one. Why is it there? Because it bothers me to see young people saying, oh, I need a drink. 
and they get a fizzy drink. People, hello. A fizzy drink will make you even more thirsty and will give you acne. Well, it gave me lots of acne. And then, and then I hear young people say, I hate water, I hate water, I, I just drink squash. I have to have squash because I hate water, mate, I hate water. What do you mean? You came, you were living inside of water for nine months. You need water to wash this pretty little body of yours. Thank God for water. <laughs> I'm grateful for water. Trump is grateful for water too. You should be grateful for water. City Youth, can I beg you, please drink water because I don't want Sophia going to school, coming home saying, I don't like water, mom. And say, first, you don't say water. Second, you drink water. No squash. I want her to drink water. I don't want her to say, I hate water. <laughs> because, you know, you're setting up now the tone for baby Sophia. If I leave my baby Sophia with you, is she going to end up Okay. Is she going to become the woman God wants her to be? If I tell her, you know what, I want you to mentor Sophia now. She's yours. You set the tone in her life. I want her to have your voice. Is she going to succeed? Is she going to be okay? Is her mental health going to be fine? Is she going to love Jesus? That's the most important thing. So become now who, you, who we need society to be in Jesus' name, which is more Jesus-like. And Jesus drank water. I'm pretty sure of that. The Bible doesn't say, but I believe so. Anyways, forget that. For number five, I'm sure your parents will say a big amen. And some of you will get even a neck on your head. I'm sorry, City Youth. I love you. Number five, watch who your friends are. Hello. Watch who your friends are. Can I? I cannot emphasize this enough. Whoever you walk with, you will become like it guaranteed, guaranteed, I promise you, I promise you, this is not parent talk, hi my good brings a mom now, no, 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 I was a pastor, see, a youth pastor before I was a mom, during my youth pastor days, and now as well a mom, I can guarantee you, watch who your friends are. I've seen in the youth ministry, we have these beautiful young people coming to youth. All of a sudden, they start hanging around with the wrong, wrong crowd. It goes wrong. It goes all wrong. Watch who your friends are. I mean, I have a thousand of Proverbs here. Are you ready for this? Let's go. So, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Good people, let's say city youth people, take advice from their friends but an evil person is easily led to do wrong. Now, the friend in here is a good friend, is a godly friend, is somebody who is in the youth, and you come to youth, and you start talking dirty, and then this friend says to you, why are you talking like that? You shouldn't talk like that. But then you refuse to listen, because people from church are weird. City youth is lame. I'm watching you. I know who you are. City youth is lame. I don't want to hang with them. They are weird. These Jesus people. Be wise. Evil person. An evil person is easily led to do wrong. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. Hi, people, I'm telling you, be pressure. Why? Especially the boys. If you are a man, if you are tough, you will do this. Remember, Jesus didn't fall for them when the devil said, yeah, if you are who you say you are, jump out of this cliff. If you are who you say you are, do this. Jesus knew the Bible and was backing it up with the word. And he, he was strong enough, confident enough to know who he was. He didn't need to prove himself to anyone, to anybody. Shame the devil. You don't either. If your king, if your master, who is the deal, didn't have to prove himself, you don't either. If he was challenged by saying, if you, if you are who you say you are, you can too. You can be challenged, but you won't fall in Jesus' name. Because I know you are challenged in school. 
The girls, I know you are challenged in school. Really? You want to get his attention? Show a little bit more. Make her skirt a little bit shorter. My goodness, it's cold. And I see those beautiful girl girls with their skirt in here with no leggings. And the wind is blowing. And now I have a baby girl. I don't want her to go to school. But I ain't homeschooling, so she has to. Oh, I'm so scared of being a mom now. Anyways, so Proverbs chapter 22, 24 to 25 says, Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man. Least you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. This is more than just joining a gang. This is something that is just, it's okay. Mom, he's not that bad, mom. Mom, she's not that bad. She is bad. And don't go there. I remember a mom came to talk to me and she was like, Bruno, I had to tell my son that he's not going out with this boy. And, 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 and she was so nervous. I was like, well done. Good for you. Good for you. You have to protect. If your mom sees something in somebody, trust her. Please. I know. My God, I became a mom. I became a mom, people. It's over. Sit youth is over. <laughs> but I'm telling you. Don't go there. If your parents are, they, they sense, they sense, they, they will tell you. I remember my mom, she knew about this girl in school, and I'm like, she's not that bad, mom, because I was already entangled. There was this story. This woman, she bought a snake for a pet. I mean, no judgments, but who does that? But So she bought, she bought a snake for a pet, and, and then she took this snake to the vet, she came to the vet and said, um, hi, doctor, basically, my, my snake, she, she's, she, she's just stretching now. She doesn't, go, she doesn't go like this anymore. She just, I don't know English very well, but she just is light. I don't know. <laughs> and, and the doctor asked one question. He said, lady, do you let your snake sleep with you? She said, yes, it's my pet. <laughs> I let my sna snake sleep with me. And the vet said, well, you shouldn't because she's stretching herself next to the bed next to you to see how big you are because she's planning to eat you. <laughs> it's true. If you Google that, you will find out that it's true. Philip, back me up. Huh? He, the animal guy, I'm sure he'll back me up. The, they, you, you, you are not made to be friends with a snake. <laughs> you, you're being tangled. Your friends will be stretching themselves next to you, pretending to be your pet, to eat you out. So be wise, it's youth. Be wise. Number six, very important. Be teachable. How important is to be teachable? You don't know everything, and it's okay. You don't have to know everything, and that's okay. You don't have to have a say about everything, and trust me, that is okay. Nobody likes people like that. It's okay. It's okay. Be teachable. Be somebody who, are, who you are willing to learn. My preaches, how many times before my preach, I call Michael Coveney because I don't know what I'm doing. So I call Michael. I say, hi, Michael. Uh, I need to preach about atonement. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm preaching about righteousness. <laughs> you need to have the spirit of teach, being teachable. Learn from somebody. Call people. Ask people. Who around you know what you are looking for? Go and ask for them. Ask them, can you, be my, can you mentor me? Uncle, can you mentor me, please? Auntie, I need a mentor. And I know you are very good with software. And I know you are pretty good in IT. Hello, Labukan. I think it's so cool that Labukan knows everything about soft, software and IT. I can barely use my microwave. Can, can, I love software, too. Can, can, you, can you teach me something? Have a teachable spirit. Don't be arrogant. Look what Proverbs. Chapter... 12 verse 1 says, anyone who loves learning accepts correction. But a person who hates being corrected is stupid. Accept being corrected. You are wrong. Tough. You are wrong. But accept it so you can go to another level. Because if you don't, you are going to go down. Or you are never going to grow. You're never going to grow. Because you know it all. You know everything. 
Everybody loves you. Everybody, <laughs> you, people, have a teachable spirit. Proverbs chapter 13, 20 says, A person who refuses correction will end up poor and disgraced. But the one who accepts correction will be honored. I think this is so powerful. This is talking about your future. You're in the poor, financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. You're in the poor. No, no, no. We want to see city youth rich in spirit, rich in their mind, emotionally rich, emotionally in attitude, rich attitude, good attitude. So enlarge yourself, allow correction. And finally, Proverbs 9, 9 says, teach the wise and they will become even wiser. Teach good people and they will learn even more. Are you a good person that I can come and reproach and tell you something that maybe you've done something wrong and are you going to listen? I had to rebu rebuke a boy uh, once and I love this boy so much. But unfortunately, the attitude was a little bit off and I had to, to rebuke it. And you know what? His attitude was so humbling. I was so proud of him. He, he took it. He took it. He said, it's true. I'm sorry. You're right. And you know what? I, I was a little bit worried. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to explode. It's not going to go well. No, he took it. And you know what? I know this boy will flourish. I know this boy will grow. I know God himself will honor this boy because his heart is in the right place. He messed up. He owned it. He humbled. And he moved on. And he kept respecting me, kept on loving me. It just grew our relationship because I honor him even more. How beautiful. Be the kind of person to your mentors, to your teachers. Surprise them with your amazing attitude. That your teachers, your mentors, your parents would be like, I wasn't expecting that. Wow. That's maturity. Surprise your mentors. Number seven. Appreciate quiet and silence. You don't need to be entertained all the time. If you are bored, you're boring. Find something to do. Create something. You know, I was reading about creativity, and I was reading like people like Bill Gates and these guys, Disney man. What's the name? Disney. It's Disney, isn't it? Disney, Mr. Disney. All these guys, they became who they became because they were bored one day, and they start thinking. They started. They got a piece of paper and pen and put their thoughts on the paper, and look where they are now. How beautiful when you allow yourself to not be bored. Appreciate quiet silence. Well, look what Jesus taught his disciples. His disciples asked one thing to Jesus. They could have taught Jesus anything, asked Jesus to be taught anything. Hi, Jesus, teach us how to do this. Teach us how to have influence. Teach us how to speak with authority. Teach, no, all he, they asked was, teach us how to pray. Jesus, teach us how to pray. Teach us how you do this. And Jesus taught, and he, and he said something else as well. He said, when you pray, Matthew 6, 6, you should go into your room and close the door and pray to your father who cannot be seen. Your father can see what is done in secret, and he will reward you. What is Jesus saying here? He's talking about quiet and silence, about you removing yourself from the chaos, from the loud, from the entertainment. To a quiet place when there's nothing. There's something powerful and beautiful there waiting for you. Waiting to grow you. Waiting to enlarge you, to stretch you, to take you to another place, a new adventurous place. Go for it. Go to your room. And Jesus is not talking just about your bedroom. He's talking, go to your room. Go to your inner heart. Shut everything and really go there and pray. And see and be still and know that he's God. It's okay. This will change your mental health. I see a lot of people, including myself sometimes, when I'm <laughs> with mental health problems and issues, and it is real, and it's true, trust me, I know. And it's because our mind is so full on with things, and we keep feeling th things because we think if we don't have anything in our minds, it's gonna get even worse. No, 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 no. Go to your room. Turn everything off 
and be still. Put, leave your phone inside the toilet and flush as well. Trust me, your mental health. Give a break on social media. Your mental health will just go up. I promise you. Forget social media for a month. Do a test. Forget, forget social media for a week. And I want you, t- you tell me your mental health didn't get better. True, truly, it will work. It will happen. Number eight, you're not going to like it. Some of you will, but some of you won't. So what? It's a good thing to learn. Enjoy your parents. Amen. (laughs) You you can give me a box of chocolate later. It's okay. It's okay. Enjoy your parents. Do I need to remind you what the Bible says? Honor your father and mother. If you want to live long, honor your father and mother. If you don't want to die early, honor your father and mother. Because that's what the Bible says. That you may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. If you don't want to die early, just respect your parents. Done deal. Now, I want you to enjoy them. I want you to be generous. Not just honor your father and mother, but enjoy them as well. Be generous. Enjoy them because you will miss them. Because they will make a difference. Can I go even further? Not just your parents, but your hometown too. I used to think when I was a teenager that my town was so lame. I live in a very small, I live, I used to live in a very small town in Brazil. It's so small that we don't even have McDonald's to this day. It's very small. And I used to think it's so lame. And now I miss everything and I go on Google Maps to see the streets. I know it's so sad, it's ridiculous. I know, oh, it's poor heart. <laughs> I go, and I was looking at the, the, the main square of the town, and I was thinking, this is beautiful. All those Portuguese tiles everywhere, very old-fashioned, and I used to think it was so old and boring. I hate grazing. I, uh, you will look back one day, and you will miss it. So enjoy now. Make a bit of effort, because one day you will leave home. You will leave, and you will miss it. So please enjoy your parents. Number nine, can I have the youth band back, please? We're going to sing another song in the end. Look at them, so cute. God bless them. Anyways, I'm sure they're wearing deodorant because we checked them before they joined the band. (laughs) They say, I I would like to join the band. Okay, put your arm. Let me test. Okay, you you are in, you're in, you're in. If they are normal, no, mate, you don't know how to put deodorant. Do you think you can play the guitar? Do you think you play the deodorant? You put the deodorant first. No, I'm joking. We're not that mean. Just a little bit. Number nine, love God and love people. What is my purpose in life? What is my purpose? Bruna, what am I here for? Your purpose in life as a human being is to love God and love people. When you learn that, you find joy. Guaranteed. When you love God, God gives you his love and you start loving people. Bruna, even difficult people. Yeah, that one's a bit hard. But <laughs> he helps with that too. He does. Because he is love. It's who he is. Look what 1 John 4, 7, 8 says. Dear friends, we should love each other because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has become God's child and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Love God and love people. But how do I love God? You go into your room, you close the door where nobody sees it, and you ask, God, I want to love you more. I want to love you more. The Holy Spirit that you cannot see will work in the invisible. We work in the mystery that you don't understand. All of a sudden, you start loving him. Because you have been going to your room and asking him that. God, I want to love you more. I want to know you more. I'm desperate for a touch of heaven. Oh. He will. He is there. And finally, this is very important to me. These two last ones are very important to my heart. But this last one. I'm happy when I do this. Serve God and serve people. 
I, I broke Barcelona again. I'm so dumb. Look what I've done. Anyways, where is the... Ah, there you go. Love God, love people. Serve God and serve people. Serve God. Duro, you didn't put this fridge for me. You put for God's kingdom. You put so the message could be a little bit more attractive to young people. Louis, God will bless you because you drink a stupid vinegar. You drink for Jesus. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. But <laughs> maybe not. But you know what? God will honor you because you, 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 you just go for it. You love God's people. You love God's house. And you don't care if people think you are mad that you jump in the worship, t- the worship during oceans. <laughs> That's okay. We love Louis because Louis is Louis. And you know what? When I met Louis, I'm like, okay, I think he's trying too hard. Now I know it is Louis. So beautiful. Louis, you are one of the most beautiful people I know. You've remained re- consistent. Amen. You don't care about what people think about you, Louis. And I love this about you. I want to learn this from you. I want to. We need to spend more time together. Because I love that. I want to learn that from you. Louis, go for it. He doesn't care. Never cared. And we never care. Beautiful. He serves this house. He loves God. He loves people. He serves God and he serves people. Philip asked him to drink vinegar. He could have said no. But he said, yeah, it's okay. Good. I'll do it. Serve people. It's so good to serve people. It's so good to serve others. And when you do that, you're doing for God. And God will bless you. God will grow you. When your heart is in the right place, church, listen to this. When you stop worrying about people taking your place, people being louder than you, people, when you stop and you're like, God, I know who I am. And I know you're going to do something with me. Because there is a place in my Father's house for me. There's a place in the Father's house for you. And can I just finish by saying, usually youth takeovers are awesome. I like bang on. We have balloons, we have a party, and, the, and we have dancers. The reason why we have nothing of it, because you're not here. It's because you're somewhere else. It would, have, it would have been amazing to have some dancers. Where are you? Where are you? Come home. Come home. Very soon we're going to open the doors on Friday night. Very, very soon. I just need to end, end up my maternity leave. But very soon, we'll open up the doors. Come home. Come home. Come where you belong. Join the band. Jo- There's no excuse. Look at these guys. They joined in the midst of pandemic. They, they didn't know anybody. They joined. Come home. Some of you belong to this house and haven't even got involved. Come home. Come home, city youth. Church, let's, let's stand up and let's pray for our young people. Let's pray. Church, let's pray for them. I want you to uh, please help me. Call them back home. Let's start praying right now for them to come back home. Father God, we ask for these young people that they will come back home in Jesus' name. Lord, we call upon the name of Jesus. We call upon the name of Jesus. Jesus, speak and let them know your voice. Speak to them, Lord Jesus, and let the sheep know the Father's voice and come back home. Come home in Jesus' name. Come home, young people. Be strong. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Come home. Come home to the Father's house where you belong, where you were born for. You were born for such a time as this, for such a house as this. You were born to be with the King of Kings. You were born to love Him, to serve Him. You were born to serve His people, to love His people. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. We miss you. This house is not the same without you. Come home. Come home in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you bless every single one person. Those who are here and those who are there, bless them, empower them in the name of Jesus, and bring them home with praise. In the name of Jesus, amen.